Welcome back to Smith Coding and Design. This is our second tutorial on our Z-axis stepper mount. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and jump into the cam. We're going to start with a facing operation. So let's go to 2D face. I'm going to go to my tool library and I'm going to choose the Superfly. I love the finish that the Superfly leaves. And again, I'm just going to go nice and slow. It doesn't really matter since the part is so small. We're at 2000 RPM, 15 inches per minute. That's given us right at around seven and a half thou per tooth. We'll go into our geometry. Our geometry is fine. We are just going to face off the entire top of our stock. There's 50 thousandths worth of material on top of our part that we want to go ahead and get rid of. So now we will go on the heights. We always want to check our heights. So again, we're removing the material from the top of our stock to the top of our model. So our top height and our bottom height is correct. We'll go into passes and here's where things get more interesting. So what I want to do because the stock is less than the diameter of the Superfly, I want to go ahead and just face off all of it. So what I'm going to do is change my step over to three inches. That way we go right down the middle of the stock and remove the material. So what I will do is go ahead and do multiple depths. I'm going to do 25 thou. Again, I'm just finishing the top surface here. I'm not trying to take off a lot of material. So we're going nice and slow. Feel free to speed it up. If you're following along, if you want to go faster or you want to take a higher depth of cut, that is fine. The Superfly is rather flexible. You could take, you know, two or three times the depth of cut if you wanted without any problems. Okay, so 25 thou even step downs. And the last thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and extend for retract. I usually check that just to make sure the tool goes all the way off the material before it retracts so that we don't leave any type of tool marks. We want a nice smooth surface finish. All right, so that should do it. So let's go ahead and press OK. And there you go. By having that three inch step over, we're just going down the center of the material. And again, I went 25 thousandths with even step downs because there's 50 thousandths on top of our part. That's why we are taking two passes and that's only going to take us 44 seconds. So let's go ahead and simulate. I'm just going to drag the timeline here just to see if we can get a nice view. So let's go back to the home view here. Okay. So it's a rather large tool, but anyway, there we go. It's nothing to write home about. What we will do is go ahead and go to the front view here. And again, just using the timeline, I want to make sure that I come all the way off the part. So I don't like that. You can see we are sort of barely coming off the part before we retract. So what I'm going to do to fix this, let's go back into edit the tool path and then let's go into, sorry, not the setup. I want to edit the tool path here. Let's go into our passes tab and notice I have both ways. I'm just going to go climb. The other thing I could have done was just increase the pass, extent, pass extension if I wanted to go both ways. Let's go ahead and click OK. There we go. So let's simulate again and just make sure that our tool goes all the way past the top of the part. Sorry, past the top of the stock. And we'll just use the front view and the timeline. Let's drag. There we go, plenty of room there. We're not gonna leave any tool marks, so that's good. And there we go, there's our two passes, and we only added a few seconds to our operation. So I am happy with that. So that's it for our first tool, pa tool path. And now we will go to our second tool path, which will be 
our 3D Adaptive Clearing. So what I'm going to do is again go to 3D Adaptive Clearing. We'll go into our Tormach library and I am going to use the 3 8 Gorilla Chimp Breaker end mill. So this is what I use for roughing. I'm going to select OK. We're at 7500 RPM, 60 inches per minute, which gives us right around 2.6 thou per tooth. There is this the uh, surface speed if you're interested in that. And now what we'll do again, because it is a 3D toolpath, Fusion takes the geometry into consideration for us. So we can sort of gloss over or just jump over the geometry tab and go directly into our heights tab. Now we already face the top of our part off, so we don't want to start at the stock top. We don't want to cut any air. We're just going to go to model top and then of course to model bottom. That's fine. Now we'll go into the passes tab and optimal load is really the most important parameter here, 150 thousandths and optimal load will stall my spindle. So I'm going to go with 30 thousandths and I'm going to change stock to leave to 10 thousandths. 20 thousandths would have been okay, but I'm just going to use 10 thousandths. Okay, everything there looks fine. And then our ramp clearance height, I'm going to use 20 thousandths, just so if we do sort of a helical entry into this hole here at the top of the part, we don't cut air, we'll just start 20 thousandths above the top surface instead of 100 thousandths. So let's go ahead and click OK. Beautiful. So there we go. That all looks nice. Let's go ahead and simulate just to make sure we don't crash our machine or hit our fixtures. So let's go ahead here, simulate. Again, there's usually red down here in the timeline if you were to collide with your fixture. So we don't see that, that's a good sign. So we're just gonna walk through the timeline here. You'll notice we're just roughing around the outside contour of the part. And there we go, there's where we sort of do that helical entry into the center to clear out that pocket. And again, that's where that ramp clearance height helps us. So we start 20 thousandths above instead of 100 thousandths just to save us time and avoid cutting air. All right, so that all looks good to me. So I'm good with that toolpath. So let's go back to the home view and then we'll go ahead and get into our next toolpath, which should be some 2D contour. So we'll go ahead and finish the outside contour of our part and we'll go ahead and finish the inside of the pocket where the thrust bearing would be. So let's go ahead and do that now. So what I'm going to do is just go up here to 2D Contour. I'm going to go select my tool, go to my Tormach library. And for my finishing tool, I'm going to be using a 3 8 Gorilla Silverback. It's a good end mill. I also use a YG1. Also another good recommendation for finishing tool. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the 3 8 3 Flute Gorilla end mill. I'm going to select OK. Now again, we're just finishing here. We're gonna go slow. We're going 30 inches per minute, which gives us right about 1.3 thou per tooth. So let's go to our geometry. And of course, I want to finish around the outside contour of the part. And I wanna finish the sidewalls here with our top pocket. So let's go ahead and look at that. We'll go ahead and again go to our heights tab. Again we faced all the material off the top so we just want to be at model top instead of stock top. In our passing tab we'll go ahead and enable smoothing and feed optimization. Okay 
All right, so that should be okay. Now we could change our compensation type to where if we were worried about the thrust bearing fit here, but because the tolerance is not a, it isn't a big deal for this part, I'm not going to worry about it. I think there's plenty of room for the thrust bearing to fit in there. And that is modeled into the mount. It's a, it is for a bearing, but it isn't a, a critical fit. All right. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and again, go to our passes tab. Everything looks okay. So now what I'm going to do is again, just go ahead and simulate. This one should go fast. So I'll probably just go ahead and press play here. So here we go. We drop in and finish. Now let's stop for a second here. So one thing I do want to mention. So you'll notice we're lucky in the fact that this hole is small enough that we can face, not face, we can finish the sidewalls and the bottom of the hole at the same time. If this hole was bigger, we would have needed to probably break up this 2D contour into two separate tool paths and use roughing passes to make sure we got the floor and the sidewalls. Again, another thing you could do is if you were worried and the bearing fit here was critical, then you could break this up into two tool paths and again, just have that finishing up or the 2D contour for the pocket and the bearing sits in separate from uh, the walls or the sidewalls on the outside contour of the part just so you could use that wear compensation and if you needed that perfect fit you could walk in the tolerance okay so we'll just go ahead and breeze through it so you see we do indeed get the floor and the sidewall so we're good there and then we walk around this part on the outside here so that all looks good to me All right, so there we go. The simulation looks fine. So one parameter I did forget to add, and we'll go back and do that, is our finishing overlap. I always use a finishing overlap of around 50 thousandths just to make sure when we, where our tool path or where our end mill enters into our 2D contour, we will just go past that by 50 thousandths in case there's any sort of artifact or anything we can try to help clean that up. All right, so that is good. Happy with that toolpath. So what we're going to do next is a series of two pocketing operations. One, we're going to go ahead and clean up the pockets on the side of the part here, and then we're going to do the counter bores for our M3 screws. So we'll do those next. I'm gonna to go to home view. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go to 2D Pocket. And now what I'm going to do is go to the tools, my Tormach library, and I'm going to use the 1 8 inch 3 flute end mill from Shar Tools. I'm going to go ahead and select that. We're going 8,000 RPM, 30 inches per minute, which gives us right around 1.2 thou per tooth. Let's go ahead and select our geometry. So again, because our top heights are going to be different for the two tool paths, we're going to go ahead and separate them. And what we can do is take advantage of the tool path duplication to sort of save ourselves some rework. So we'll do that. All right, so everything looks good there. And now here's what I was referring to when we were talking about the top highs. You'll notice in the video, I cut some air here and to avoid cutting air because I make sure that all the tool paths work before I do the tutorials. So you guys get the benefit of learning from my mistake. So what we can do here, instead of stock top, we're just going to go to selection and I am going to select one of our pockets there. And then we know that there is 10,000 worth of material 
left on the floor. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and say I want my top height to be this face plus 10 thousandths. So that's all that I'm going to do. Beautiful. Okay. So I do not want to leave any stock. And again, there's only 10 thousandths there. So everything else should be fine. I do want to change the step over to be 50% the diameter of our end mill. So I will go ahead and change that here. Okay, everything looks good. I will enable finishing passes and of course 10 thou. And I'm just going to go ahead and enable smoothing and feed optimization. And we can go ahead and if we want, just do a finishing overlap of 50 thousandths. All right, that all looks good. And then again, for this ramp, we're going to change the ramp clearance height to 20 thousandths instead of 100 thousandths just to help avoid cutting air. So that should be everything for this tool path. We'll go ahead and generate it. We'll go back to our home view here. I guess zoom in just slightly, right click, and again simulate just to make sure that we don't run into our fixture or in any way, shape, or form damage our part. So that looks good. No issues that I see there. And you'll notice we just sort of walk around the sides and do each of the pockets individually. And so now to finish off the pocketing operation, all that we need to do is we're just going to right click and then we are going to go to duplicate. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to edit this tool path. And the first thing we're going to do is go into our geometry and clear our geometry. I'm going to orbit slightly here. And then I'm going to select all the faces on the inside of our counter bore. Okay, so that all looks good to me. And then what I want to do here is go ahead and clear our top height and we want our top height to be from the model top this time and not from a selection. And we also want to get rid of our 10 thou there. So that looks good. The last thing I want to do is because this is a counter bore, I don't want to essentially plunge into the hole. I want to go down in steps. So I'm going to go multiple depths. I'm going to change my roughing step down to 30 thousandths. And then we still have our finishing pass. Okay, so I'm good with that. Let's go ahead and click OK. And there you have it. We have went ahead and made our counter bores. So we'll just go ahead and simulate. Okay, that's all fine. We're just stepping down. We get a nice smooth counter bore. Now, one thing I would eventually like to try is instead of doing a pocket for these counter bores, maybe trying a boring operation, a 2D bore. So I'm always afraid to break my 1 8 inch end mill because I've broken so many of them that I just went with a pocket. But again, Eventually, I think I'm going to try to come up with a recipe to turn those into a 2D board just so, I mean, you'll notice if we just sort of, let me orbit a little bit. Let's go back to the beginning here. You notice that we just sort of go in step downs and then clear. So we're going 30 down and then clear 30 thousands more down and then clear the material way. So with a 2D bore, it would just be sort of one spiral motion downward and would give us sort of a smoother tool path. So I think eventually I will work on a recipe for that using the 1 8 end mill. I did not do it for this part.
Okay, so what we're going to end up doing next will be making this nice large chamfer. We'll use a ball nose end mill and then all that's left is a drilling operation, or I should say a couple drilling operations. So we'll go ahead and and go to our next toolpath. All right, guys, so for the sake of just keeping these tutorials, the videos at a decent length, we're actually going to stop here and we'll pick up on the ball nose end mill and our chamfer here with all the drilling operations in the next video. I just want to make sure that the videos aren't too long. I know that it can be hard to sit through a 20 minute video, so I want to start trying to keep the videos around around 10 minutes each. So we'll see how that goes. I know it's hard once we get sort of into the details here to have to stop and move to the next video. But again, I want to try to keep them shorter. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and transition into seeing the tool pass we've done so far performed on the tour mock. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. All right, so we begin with our facing operation. We're using a tour mock superfly going 15 inches per minute. We're going to take two passes with a 25 thou depth of cut. We're facing the entire width of the stock, which is two inches. Again, if you can see from the video, we get a nice mirror finish using the superfly. It's one of my favorite tools to use. It looks even better with flood coolant. Right now, I'm just using the fog buster for image clarity. All right, so now we're going into our 3D adaptive clearing, running a 3 8 inch, three flute gorilla chimp breaker end mill. This is my roughing tool, going 60 inches per minute, 630 thousandths for the depth of cut, and for optimal load, we are at 30 thousandths. Again, we're just trying to remove as much material as we can at a reasonable pace, so this tool path typically takes the longest so enjoy and I'll try to sort of break up the video so you can see the key points and then we'll move on to the next toolpath. All right here we're still with the 3D adaptive clearing. We're doing the helical entry into the pocket in the center and as soon as we reach the bottom we'll go a lot faster and the chips will start to fly so you'll see that. Now we're going to finish the 3D adaptive clearing by just removing the chips for the small pockets that are on each side of the part and then we'll come through later with our eighth inch end mill and go ahead and finish the pockets on the side as well as the counter bores for our M3 screws. All right, so now we've finished the center pocket and the outside contour of our part using a 3 8 inch three flute gorilla silverback end mill. We're going 30 inches per minute. We're still at 630 for a depth of cut on the outside. And we're really just removing the 10 thousandths we left on the floor and on the sidewalls. So now what we're going to do next is transition into our 2D pocketing operations. So here's the beginning of our 2D pocket. We're using a 1 8 inch 3 flute shards end mill, 30 inches per minute, 30 thou depth of cut, 50% the diameter of the tool for our width of cut. Again, we are starting with the pockets that are on all four corners of the part, and then we will work our way into the counter bores, which you will see now. So here's the beginning of the counter bore. Again, just going down in steps of 30 thousandths and then clearing away the pocket at 30 inches a minute. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the Tormach machining and I look forward to seeing everyone in the next tutorial.